uh, to the over 300 policymakers, think tank executives and scholars and policy um, oriented organizations around the world. My name is James McGann and I'm director of the Think Tanks and Civil Societies Program at the Lauder Institute at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, PA. Today, uh, we have assembled uh, a distinguished panel uh, to discuss uh, the um, role of the T20 under the title From Saudi Arabia to Italy, G20 and T20 Priorities for Another Crucial Year. Today, think tanks and intergovernmental organizations are confronted with a daunting set of issues and dilemmas and must operate in a policy environment that is characterized by more issues, actors, competition, and conflict. This is precisely why we need to forge meaningful international um, partnerships and transform our organizations so they can be fit for purpose and can effectively manage the increased velocity of information and policy flows. To meet these challenges, all organizations, including the UN and other crucial organizations such as the T20 and G20, must be smarter, better, faster, tech savvy, and above all else, innovative and agile. If we have any chance of addressing the clear and present danger we face from transnational issues like the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, climate change, food and water insecurity, and future pandemics. The G20 and T20 has been um, an effective me mechanism uh, for addressing uh, and sustaining the G20 agenda and forging partnerships with governments, IGOs, and think tanks around the world. The T20 has been described as both the intellectual and muscle behind uh, the agenda and forging the agenda for the T20, um, for the G20, excuse me. Um, but it also faces many challenges uh, which uh, are now being addressed uh, by the members of the T20. And just let me outline some of those issues. The T20 currently faces a num number of issues that can be addressed um, by a set of reforms. The current challenges facing uh, the T20 and those on the panel are well aware of them. Um, a lack of diversity and inclusiveness. Um, each and every T20 host is faced with a lack of financial resources to mount um, this um, challenging agenda under a very uh, serious time, pressures and constraints. The need for greater transparency and accountability in terms of the T20 organization, how to be more policy relevant, um, and what is the important role that think tanks play in the G20 um, process. And above all, helping the world respond um, to crisis, crises and disruptions. No better example of this is um, T20 Saudi Arabia, which face an unprecedented uh, and extraordinary set of um, challenges um, and rose to the task and served as a model in terms of inclusiveness and in terms of um, under great having grace and effectiveness under tremendous uh, fire and headwinds uh, by the pandemic, et cetera, but successfully carried the torch of the G20 uh, forward. Today, we are formally, and I think in a very positive and seamless way, 
passing the torch from Saudi Arabia uh, to Italy, who and whose able hands, and at a critical moment or a crucial moment, uh, will lead us in 2021 uh, for the 2021 um, G20 summit. I'd like to, uh, on the panel, are uh, those both past and present and future um, host um, for the T, uh, for the G20 and T20, those who have served as chair, um, and those uh, who have organized past uh, T20 events. This addresses or is beginning to address the issue of continuity uh, between one summit to the next. I'd first like to ask uh, Gustavo Martinez uh, from Cari in Argentina and Julia Panes uh, uh, from CPEC in Argentina, uh, the two chairs uh, uh, for the T20 Argentina. And then we will hear uh, from Noyuki uh, Yoshina, who was the chair of the T20 for Japan. Gustavo? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, here from Argentina. I'm very pleased to meet you all today, and I'd like to express my gratitude to ISPI for the invitation. I'm sure that our institutions, the think tanks, have learned several things during the whole process started in Mexico in 2012, when we were called to play an even more important role than we had in the past in terms of contribution of diagnosis and solutions. And since then, the T20 meetings have become an important indicator of intellectual partnership and shared research objectives among the worldwide think tanks while presenting an opportunity to bring up new ideas and deliver concrete policy suggestions that can help the world to achieve its vision. I mean, the vision for the future, especially in critical situations like the one we are experiencing now under the COVID-19 pandemic. I'd like to add that it's gratifying to notice that the agenda of the different T20 last presidencies cover a wide range of very interesting items to contribute to our expertise to develop recommendations for the G20. And let me tell you that the T20 even gained a single structure since the entire process was organized based on the tax forces. I remember it was in Germany. And I think that it's been, a, this, it's been a, a breakthrough or insight in terms of giving more content to the group. And it is in this complicated context where the next president of the T20 faces one of the biggest challenges that is to keep working on the consolidation of the T20. And also I'm convinced that besides the goal of drafting a set of concrete policy suggestions for the G20 leaders, the T20 creates a link among academics from all around the world, which in turn foster cooperation far beyond the T20 topics and setting the goal of threatening the mutualism, which will allow for the construction of a, of a base to favor more work as well as peace and prosperity in the international system. Regarding this new reality imposed on us by the COVID-19, the, uh, the T20 think tanks must continue to work on reports that address the impacts of pandemia in areas that are considered key. For example, the world economy, world economy global trade, food security, climate change, uh, and how to defend an open and sustainable and stable multilateral system. Clearly the next C20 presidency and all of us who are involved in this process must continue to favor interaction between the policy makers think that worldwide and other players involved in the G20. Um, and at the same time, we should be very alert on the global agenda to come, because I believe that we all agree that the world as we know it will change. I'm sure that the T20 is an excellent forum to work on it. Finally, I want to thank and congratulate again our Saudi Arabian colleagues for the, their past presidency. I wish our Italian colleagues a great job and the best of successes for the upcoming presidency of the T20. Thank you very much.
Julia. Thank you, James. Um, thank you for the invitation. Very glad to be here on this very important moment of the T20. I remember the first days of the pandemic, uh, late March. I was uh, suffering, trying to think how CPEC was going to adapt to the new situation. And I had a, a call with a, a very esteemed colleague and he, he uh, gave me some, some tips. And I remember one of them that was very important for me that was uh, in moments of crisis, you remember why you were there in the first place. So I, I was all these months thinking uh, uh, why CPEC was there at the, at, the first, at, the, at the first place and what is that organizations are uh, thought to do and, and have the focus on that. And I think uh, that this is the moment in which we realize why the T20 was there uh, at the first place and why it was created for and what we need to do in the, in the coming months as we've done these months. And I think that uh, having uh, the relevance to uh, say what we need to say in these very important moments, especially in 2021 with a, a new normality that we are all waiting for, that we know that it's not going to be as we thought at the beginning, uh, that one day uh, we will magically be in the new normality. We know that, that the times to come are going to be very tough, as tough as the ones that we've been living this year. So I cannot uh, imagine of an of a important role for the T20 to be policy relevant. And as Jim was saying, innovative in thinking, uh, what are the main recommendations that we need to do? And, and I think it's not only in terms of policy recommendations and technicalities, but also how the T20 helps uh, the world to build the new narratives for the new normality. What are the narratives that are going to be cohesive, inclusive? How are we going to create a new social contract that is more, more just and also more equal for all of us? And I'm very uh, pleased to know that we've been working in the hands of uh, ISPI and these esteemed colleagues. I, I know that it's going to be uh, a great job. And I know that the consolidation of this network, as Gustavo was saying before, that we've been doing collectively over the years is going to be a very important asset for 2021. And I'm sure that we're going to keep creating this network together. So let me finish by congratulating our Saudi friends for a very, very uh, uh, difficult year and also very uh, successful in how we were able to build all these recommendations together and keep this community growing. And I, I wish our friends at ESP uh, the best uh, of the successes for the next year. So thank you very much. And I hope we are up to the promise of what the T20 needs to be in order to uh, keep uh, the idea of what we were there in the first place and what we need to do to keep this uh, torch uh, alive as Tim was saying. Thank you very much. And thank you for inviting me to be in part of this event. Dr. Yoshino, chair of the T20 Japan. Uh, you're muted, Dr. Yoshino. Okay, thank you very much for inviting me today. I think continuity is very important in T20. Japan has succeeded from Argentina, then next to Saudi Arabia and Italy. And many of the topics are continued from previous year, of course, adding new topics. And this year, it was the first time we did most of the meetings by Zoom and webinar. But we found out it was very successful and I hope we can meet face-to-face -face next year. And evidence-based is very important for T20. So even though we may have some slightly different conclusions, but if it were based on evidence, then we can come up slightly different conclusions. And that is the purpose of T20, which is very different from G20. And then secondly, this COVID-19 will have a big impact this year, next year, 
in near future. First one is income disparities may be rising much more. In many countries, small and medium-sized enterprises have been suffered very much, restaurants and so on. So next topic is how to stop those uh, income disparities, how to mitigate those disparities, and how to support small and medium-sized enterprises. That would be a very important topic. Second one is fiscal deficits are growing in many regions, in Asia also. And central bank, many countries started to support those fiscal deficits. Several years ago, central bank was often talked about independence. But currently, fiscal authorities and central bank are getting together to support the economy. So for the moment, it is very good to support those economy. However, money supply is increasing in many countries. So one of the concern is in future, inflation may hit in many countries. So that may be another important topic we have to discuss. Then climate change is another important thing in many countries has been already discussed. One of the method is global taxation on CO2 plastics may be one of the solutions. However, taxation is very different from one country to another. So T20 is the best place to discuss what could be the best policy to cope with our climate change. And another one is the digital uh, economy, digital technology will affecting a lot in many regions. And I think one of the topic related to digital economy is education. Digital technology can help <coughs> education and if, wherever they live, rural area or island, top teacher in the country can provide best lecture to everybody. So human capital development could be created. And there are lots of things we have to discuss in Italy and next will be in India. So I hope T20 community can create the best solutions, possible outcomes so that all over the world, we can keep on going sustainable economic growth. So that is the purpose of T20. Thank you very much. Okay, we now will hear from uh, Fahad El Turki, chair of the T20 for Saudi Arabia, who will summarize major results of the recently concluded Saudi T20 G20. Uh, thank you, Jim, and it's a pleasure to connect with uh, everybody, with our colleagues uh, uh, from the T20 uh, community. Uh, let me uh, share my screen so we can go over some of the main uh, highlights under the T20 Saudi Arabia. Uh, of course, uh, today is, is the last day of the presidency of um, T20 Saudi Arabia and a new start for the T20 Italy. Uh, and we wish our colleagues in, in Italy the best of, um, of luck and we will work closely with them uh, in terms of support and, uh, uh, um, and sharing the lesson learned uh, from our experience. Um, it has been, uh, of course, as mentioned by the esteemed uh, members of this uh, panel, it's been a challenging year for, for the kingdom, one of which is, is the COVID-19 and the shift from the in-person meetings to the virtual uh, uh, gathering. Uh, but of course, with the support of the all T20 community, the think tank community around the world, uh, we've been very successful uh, on bringing together uh, the community, strengthening the communication uh, with our counterparties uh, around, uh, around the G20 countries as well as outside, uh, outside uh, the G20 countries. Um, we have started last year uh, with uh, three main workshops to build uh, a bottom-up uh, theme for the uh, T20 Saudi Arabia. 
and our team was striving for a future of prosperity, sustainability, and inclusion. And the 2020 year was, was a defining year by, by all means, not only because of COVID-19, but also because of many other events that took, uh, that took place, one of which we are a 10 year uh, uh, to the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. It is the first G20 to be hosted in the Middle East. It is the first year where the whole G20 process convert to a virtual uh, setting. And if we fast forward to, to, to our summit, uh, we look at the G20 T20 Saudi Arabia as being one of the largest uh, T20s since inception with 146 policy briefs, more than 650 authors, 460 institutions, 62 countries participated and 55 co-chairs for our 11 uh, task forces. We, man we maintained our main uh, mandate, which is facilitating interaction among the G20 members and the policy community, generating concrete and feasible policy recommendations, assessing the G20 results, and guiding the G20 policy making, and last but not least, communicating with the general public uh, about issues of global, global importance. Speaking of the communication, we've seen a huge interest in the T20 role um, in the social media platform. If you look at, for example, the number of followers in our uh, Twitter account, it increased significantly to nearly 70,000 uh, follower uh, this year only. We have defined many of uh, many themes and objectives uh, and uh, Dr. Yoshinu uh, highlighted uh, many of them, including climate and environment, empowering women and youth. We also touched on multilateralism, economic development and finance sustainable resources, technology and digitalizations. And if you look, we have also reflected the regional uh, perspective with participation from the Middle East and North Africa, including youth in the one of the task forces, including migrations and young societies in, in our discussion, which are an impor important issues for, for the Middle East and North Africa. While we developed our themes um, bottom up, uh, as well as before the announcements of the priorities of the G20, we see a huge synergy between the T20 themes as well as the G20 priorities in Saudi Arabia, which include empowering people, safeguarding the planet and shaping a new frontier. And in March and April, when we realized the, the huge impact of COVID-19 on our societies, our economies, as well as the climate and environment, we have done, we done two things that I, uh, with the support of the T20 community and the think tanks community. The first one is to introduce a new task force, the multidisciplinary approach to complex problem, which is task force 11 as well as define COVID-19 as an overarching theme uh, to be addressed by all the other 10 task forces under the T20 Saudi Arabia. One of the main challenges under COVID-19 is the communication with the G20 uh, uh, working groups. As you know, meetings have been converted to virtual and shortened from usually two days meetings to a few hours uh, meeting. And to address that challenge, we converted to issuing policy statements. And throughout the year in particular, after March, we have issued 14 statements that are uh, provided by our co-chairs of the task forces. And these ranges from addressing or giving policy recommendations to the extraordinary uh, leadership uh, meeting that took place uh, at the end of March uh, uh, this year, um, to measures of sustainable and uh, stable uh, global food market. Uh, we also issued statements related to climate on the circular carbon economy. 
we made sure that we are cooperating and working closely with the other engagement groups. So many of our statements have been uh, jointly issued with other engagements group or with international organization and in particular UNDP. If we look at the outreach of the T20 uh, this year, this map shows the author's participation. And as you see, there have been a participation from every continent uh, around the world. The top three countries that participated in terms of number of authors is the US with 129 authors, Saudi Arabia with 128 authors, and Germany with 40 uh, authors. Of course, we've seen a very strong participation from Italy with 31 authors from 13 institutions. Jim, you talked about the diversity of the T20. And if we look at this map, I think this shows where we should, moving forward, focus our attention. Like Central Asia, for example, Eastern Europe, Africa, definitely, as well as some countries in Latin America. I think if we engage with the think tanks within these regions, uh, we will achieve the diversity that is desired and reflect the world participation in the T20 process. One of the also challenges under T20, under T20, under COVID-19 is how to conduct a summit while we allow and give opportunity for all the hard work to be presented uh, during a two day event that is only three hours each day. So we opted to introduce a summit season rather than only a two day summit. We started our summit season in September 17th until October 31st. So it was a month and a half summit that saw 11 uh, task force webinars, 11 co-hosting institutions. This is part of our inclusive approach. So we shared uh, the, the T20 summit with the leading think tanks globally. We've seen 244 um, speakers participate in these, uh, in these events with more than 60,000 registrations. And we have seen um, a number of viewers for our last two days summit exceed the 1 million uh, viewers. So the technology uh, and the virtual setup, it has its advantage as Dr. Yoshino uh, mentioned and highlighted. <laughs> During the summit, we, we, we shared the, um, our T20 communique, which includes 32 uh, proposals, uh, policy recommendations. And out of these policy, if we look at, compare the communique of T20 and the communique of the uh, G20 or the concluding statement of the G20, we see a huge synergy between, uh, between the two. Many words that are mentioned within the T20 communique are also reflected and highlighted in the uh, G20 declaration. And in particular, if we look at our 32 proposals uh, that we recommended to the G20, we see that 11 of these 32 uh, are fully matched by the recommendations by the G20. So this puts us as, or put the T20 um, at 33% uh, success, success rate. Nine proposals of the T20 were partially matched. We look at some of the examples that we have uh, recommended or the T20 have recommended, includes the utilization of the circular carbon economy approach that ensure carbon neutral uh, energy transitions. And this highlights the, reason, the, the, the area that Dr. Ishino mentioned in terms of uh, the implications of climate and it has to be addressed under the T20. Um, institutionalize incentives uh, and incentivize heavy industry and corporate wide initiatives to manage emissions, 
toward achieving climate goals is also um, uh, fully matched by uh, the G20 uh, declaration. Uh, unifying support for a new um, uh, internationally led effort, coordinate the rapid uh, international expansion of a new global low carbon uh, hydrogen market. What's interesting, many of our recommendations when it comes to climate have been adopted by the leaders' dec declaration. Some of the recommendations that are partially uh, uh, covered or partially matched by the uh, leaders' declaration include embrace comprehensive and universal healthcare coverage, make concrete progress on the implementation of the World Health Organization and the international health regulations, support primary health care, ensure that comprehensive early childhood education care and development uh, are essential element of uh, national strategies. We still believe these recommendations are critically important and we will continue on, on these recommendations working with our Italian counterparts uh, to make sure that these declarations or these recommendation, policy recommendations are adapted under the Italian um, uh, presidency. We have conducted at the end of the uh, T20 Saudi Arabia, we have sent a, a survey to see how our community is perceiving the process and we um, ask for feedback uh, from the T20 uh, community with the aim to provide this feedback to our um, uh, Italian counterparties to make sure that we, there is a sense of continuity and to your point, uh, Jim, to have uh, a, a reform to improve the T20 process moving forward, especially when it comes to diversity and inclusion. One of the questions that we asked our uh, uh, co-chairs and authors, <laughs> as well as the T20 team is, how was your overall experience with the T20 Saudi Arabia? 54% um, uh, replied with a po excellent, 36% replied with, with good, which puts, a, which puts it at 90% either excellent or good. The second point is how effective was the T20 Secretariat in providing a clear strategic role in the beginning as well as throughout the year and in particular throughout the, tra the, um, the transition under COVID-19. And the overall overwhelming positive answer, 80% 80, 80 either excellent or, or good. Um, on the issue of uh, how we think um, the decision to have a summit season with individual task forces seminars rather than a single summit conference, uh, the response was 80% either excellent or good. And with the final, finally, we rating the effectiveness of the schedule of drafts of and progress of policy briefs. So we want to hear from our authors how we, of course, there is a very tight deadline uh, on our policy briefs, but what we have seen in the survey at 80% feel that the process was either excellent or, uh, or good. So I would like to take this opportunity to uh, express um, uh, a gratitude and, and thank to our um, uh, co-chairs uh, who led the 11 uh, task forces coming from 20 different, uh, different countries. We have around um, 41 uh, co-chairs, two of which are, uh, are from, uh, from Italy. And we are very proud of the representation of female within the leadership of the task forces, in, uh, which is reaching 45%. And also a special thank to our uh, task force coordinators who managed the whole process within, uh, within the T20 task forces, uh, coming from CAPSARC and KF Cress, the co-leading institutions. 
Um, the T20 Secretariat team uh, also worked uh, definitely uh, hard, especially on the, from the leadership, uh, as well as our research and policy team, the institutional development, our executive coordinators, as well as the communication uh, throughout a very challenging, uh, a very challenging year. So a special thank goes to our T20 Secretariat team. Now, Uh, looking, looking back at what has been accomplished under the T20 uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, with definitely a great support from the T20 uh, community, to summarize 32 uh, policy recommendations that are summing uh, the contribution of uh, uh, more than 600 authors, producing 146 policy briefs. Um, 464 institutions participated from 62, uh, 62 countries. Of course, managing that number of, uh, of policy briefs and summarizing it was, was, was a huge task. And I think the number of policy briefs keep growing as we, as a T20, become, uh, become more, more inclusive uh, and more, more diverse. Finally, I would like to take this opportunity to announce uh, that officially we are passing the torch uh, from T20 Saudi Arabia to T20 Italy. And while we step down from the leadership of T20, we will continue to work with our Italian uh, T20 leadership to provide the support and lesson learned from our experience, as well as working with the T20 community to pursue a future of prosperity, sustainability, and inclusion. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the, um, this gathering of, in terms of panelists uh, represents the, uh, now uh, close coordination of the global think tank community, uh, which I think greatly benefits us all in terms of the seamless transition, uh, the sharing of information uh, to help uh, future hosts of uh, the T20 and G20. We now turn to Paolo Magri, who is the chair of the T20 uh, for Italy, who will talk about the plans for 2021. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Jim. And thank you to the previous T20 chairs for sharing their lessons learned. Uh, many thanks uh, in particular to Fahad al Turki uh, for the support was provided during the transition to the Italian T20 and also for making us uh, worried all the time we listen to him with his number his results his presentation it's uh, really uh, very uh, uh, scaring for for us in uh, stepping in but we know as you said that we had support from you but we will have still support from you as well as from the other t20 chairs with are with us today we will definitely treasure all your inputs and be reassured we will follow the path ahead with patience and responsibility. Patience and responsibility, but also some worry as well. Not, not the one I mentioned after uh, Fahad presentation, not only the one I mentioned after Fahad presentation, but other worries. Why some worries? for opportunities that we have, but also the challenges that we are going to face uh, uh, in the next year. Let me start from opportunities. It is clear to us that the need for multilateralism and global coordination is there much more than ever. On paper, there, there is also the will there but we cannot deny that 
T20 will run into a couple of usual challenges plus a new one. The first usual challenge is to produce, as mentioned before by many, effective and actionable policy recommendation for board leaders. This is not new. The second usual challenge is the ability, again mentioned before, to be heard, to have our policy recommendation included in the G20 final deliberation and most importantly, in actions afterwards. Then the new challenge. Let's be honest, there are growing noises coming from some government, but also from experts, not to mention citizen, that the G20 and consequently the T20 is getting inadequate. For some, the G20 is too large, too different, too diverse, to be relevant, to take action. And for some, we should go back to the G7 or move towards a D10 or D something or any other small group of like-minded countries. The message is crystal clear. Let's keep China and others out. For others, the G20 is too small, not representative enough of the collective will of the world. These voices appear to be calling for a G20, which looks like a sort of resurrected Assembly General of the United Nations. These two noises appear to be at odds, but they both tap into the same uneasiness with the G20 format. Be it a problem of representation, the G20 leaves many countries out, or one of effectiveness, active by consensus is hard, even with about 20 countries. Both noises address relevant issue, but miss one crucial point. The G20 has been and still remain the only attempt to take a color picture of today's world, instead of relying on a 70 years old black and white photo, the one of the UN Assembly General, or on a fading photo taken 40 years ago, the G7 format. All these noises, the new challenges, will loom on our 2021 exercise. While it is obviously not up to us to defend specific multilateral forum, we should consider these new challenges as a further impulse to do better, to, to be even more policy oriented. To this aim, our main effort will go to streamlining and prioritizing the wide range of topics the T20 will address. To shining a light on all topics, of course, all topics that need further reflection while selecting those that are best dealt with at the G20 level rather than at a global, regional or domestic level. As an example, we often talk about rising inequalities. Dr. Yoshino mentioned that a few minutes ago, but we all know that income inequality is an issue where action can mostly stem from domestic level. On the contrary, when we turn to poverty and indebtedness, the G20 level has definitely a role to play, even if, as we know, it's not playing it hard enough. So having this all in mind and coming to a more practical uh, presentation, how will we proceed with the Italian T20? Uh, I'm, this is the world show of the Italian T20 from today's end over to the T20 summit, where you can see major step, both in terms of T20 events and in terms of production of policy briefs. ISPI, together with IAE and Bocconi University and our knowledge partner Deloitte and KPMG and our partners, two banks foundation, which will support the T20 will work hand in hand from today 
to match the impressive results of our predecessor. So before we ask the two T20 coordinators to say something more about task forces and policy area of, the, of our T20, Jim, I think we have a recorded video of the Italian G20 Sherpa on the priorities of the Italian G20. Thank you. Yes, now we have uh, Pietro uh, Benassi, Sherpa for the G20, who will address us by video. Here T20 chairs, Dr. Fahad Al-Turki and Paolo Magri. It is a pleasure for me to be virtually present at this handing over ceremony with you. First, let me thank the King Abdullah Petroleum Studies and Research Center and the King Faisal Center for Research and Islamic Studies for their hard work. Despite the pandemic, you succeeded in delivering a successful T20. At the same time, I sincerely want to wish all the best to both ISPI and EI that are about to take over the very important task of leading the efforts of the T20 in 2021. Let me be clear, the Italian presidency attaches the greatest importance to engagement groups since they represent the civil society and the number one objective of the G20 is to strive and actively collaborate to deliver a better global society for its citizens. In this difficult task, we rely on you and your ideas, expertise and proposals. All the key global challenges that we are called to face are complex and interrelated. We need your help to develop initiative and effective solutions. For these reasons, I personally want to thank each and every think tank and all the researchers that have contributed concretely to the proposals that you carry forward. The G20 under the Italian presidency wants to propose a holistic approach that aims at establishing a better balance between people and planet in our pursuit of a new sustainable prosperity. We want not only to tackle the pandemic, but to take advantage of this unprecedented crisis to build together a better reality for all. This means tackling inequalities, spreading the opportunities which lie in the digital revolution, speeding up the energy transition, protecting the environment, helping the countries most in need. These goals are fundamental, but not easy. We will need all the brain power that you can deliver. So please keep up the excellent work and we look forward to collaborating with you in 2021. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now uh, turn uh, to the uh, two T20 coordinators. Um, Ettore Greco, uh, coordinator T20 for Italy. Ettore, your mic is muted. Your mic is muted. Can you hear me? Now we can. Oh, thanks. So thanks, James. And good afternoon, uh, uh, morning or evening, everyone. Many thanks for, for the invitation. A special thank in particular to the Saudi chair of the T20, uh, Dr. Al Turki. I, I hope uh, indeed that your very informative and enlightening presentation will be widely disseminated. You did indeed a, a, a lot. Uh, um, this year was a huge and successful endeavor. We have, uh, I think, uh, many lessons uh, to learn uh, from, from what you, you did in the last 12 months. Uh, thanks also all the previous speakers for the kind and indeed encouraging words uh, of congratulations and wishes. I'm glad to speak on behalf of the International Affairs Institute, uh, which is based in Rome, which uh, will co-chair the T20 process un under the Italian presidency in close coordination with ISPI. In this context, we will in particular be responsible for coordinating five task forces. 
let me start by making a couple of general considerations. I think uh, in conducting our work, we should constantly have in mind uh, two crucial functions that the G20 plays in the global governance system, and which I think uh, have become increasingly important in the last few years as the crisis of multilateralism has deepened. One is trust building. Trust is a crucial resource we know is now in short supply. This creates a, a climate of uncertainty that we know is highly damaging at various levels. The G20 can do a lot to reverse such situation and recent political developments may offer valuable opportunities to restore confidence, especially among the major players. The other key function is to offer the political impulse needed to revive multilateral cooperation at the various governments uh, level and facilitate uh, uh, agreements to reform the current governance instruments. One of our primary tasks is, I think, look into the new opportunities for dialogue and common action that may open in the coming months and how they can translate into concrete initiatives. We need in particular to discuss how the G20 can stimulate the synergy between regional and global initiatives. A growing attention need to be paid also to the norm setting role of the G20. This role has gained a growing importance in a number of policy sectors where regulatory agreements are still lacking. This is indeed a key component of the G20 trust building role. Within the T20, we should try to encourage research efforts and policy-oriented analysis aimed in particular at identifying the concrete ways and means through which the G20 can keep and possibly enhance its commitments related to the most urgent issues. Two main examples are the promise to ensure an affordable and fair distribution of COVID-19 vaccines, drugs, and tests which is, we know, extremely demanding, and the debt service suspension, suspension initiative for developing countries that many think should be extended and include debt forgiving. Another important line of research will be the reform measures of the G20 itself. The T20 under the Saudi presidency has put forward a number of interesting reform proposals, including the creation of new groups that certainly deserve to be further explored and promoted. More generally, we'll do our best to develop the many new research paths recently opened by the T20 research groups. We feel this is a central part of our mandate. We want to make the most of the inspiring results of the last 12 months. In doing that, we try to encourage interdisciplinary efforts Practically all major topics require the involvement of different expertise and specializations, interdisciplinary and cross-fertilization are indeed the distinctive features of the T20. Even some thematic overlapping with, between the various task forces is not only in, 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 inevitable, but may also prove helpful and beneficial. And the subtopic that we have chosen are not meant to be an exhaustive list but rather to suggest some lines of re uh, reflection. Our aim is to identify the critical trends and challenges, discuss the best practices, success stories, and lessons learned, and on the basis of that, elaborate actionable policy options and recommendations. This is the mix that can ensure success. The Task Force on Global Health and COVID-19 will be interdisciplinary by definition. Its overarching theme is how to foster global solidarity to ensure universal access to healthcare and vaccine development and distribution, which implies improving information sharing and scientific collaboration. At the same time, we need to continue to examine the wide ranging social economic impact of the pandemic, including on markets and welfare systems but also on more specific sectors such as transportation and education. The Migration Task Force will also have to adopt an interdisciplinary approach by analyzing demographic trends and all economic and social aspects related to the integration problem. 
but there is also a clear need to advance research on how to ensure a more comprehensive international protection, not only for refugees, but also for economic migrants. The G20 countries should probably pay more attention to the many proposals for enhancing the existing codes and international rules. Burden sharing also remains a crucial but largely unaddressed problem in this field. In the context of the Task Force on Trade, Growth and Investment, a major issue to be studied will remain, of course, the prospects or reform of the WTO, the role of flexible instruments such as plurilateral agreement, but also of regional trade deals on which the Saudi presidency has placed considerable emphasis. An overarching theme, which is intertwined with many others, are the initiatives that can be undertaken to safeguard the functioning of global value chains and reduce tariffs on essential goods. Concerning the constraints- Less than one minute remaining. Yes, uh, opportunities for growth. I think the T20 has already done a worldwide work and some line of research regarding, for instance, the impact of demographic transition and the prospect of global coordination of tax policies that serve to be further developed. Infrastructure investment is a topic to which, as you probably know, the Italian government is intention to give high priority. The key overarching question here is to how to fill the investment gap that is uh, hamstringing badly needed infrastructure development. The green transition, no doubt, offers considerable business opportunity. This is a subject we will have to discuss also in the SDGs task force. Uh, new research also will be to be directed at exploring new measures of human being or concept of growing importance such as circular economy. The Italian government is emphasizing the urban dimension of SDGs implementation, but I'm sure that there is a mounting interest in exploring the role of philanthropy, a religious network that has been stressed by the Saudi presidency. In conclusion, this is no doubt a rich menu and a demanding one, but let me stress again that we will do our best to make such endeavors successful, in particular, ensuring continuity with the recent research efforts of T20 and the maximum involvement of the very valuable expertise of the T20 network. Next. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Antonio Villafranca, coordinator T20 uh, for ISPI. Thank you very much, Jim. So but before I focus on the other thematic task forces, so let me just remind uh, that the complete list of task forces and related policy areas will be available, available tomorrow in our Think20 website and circulated through our social media. So please watch out tomorrow. Uh, also, as said before, uh, the policy areas we have mentioned today, today are intended to be preliminary. We'll finalize them at a later stage when all task forces, co-chair and members are identified. So getting back to the task forces. Um, when we designed those task forces, we took into consideration both long-standing global challenges and the disrupting effect of COVID-19 with one clear cut purpose, drafting policy options which may lead to action at the G20 level. So in this view, let's start from a task force on climate change, sustainable energy and environment. Yeah, let me recall what uh, the Team 20 Chair Paolo Magri said about the G20 as the best place, or maybe not, to take action. For sure, after three consecutive summits in which G20 leaders were not able to reach consensus explicitly due to the unwillingness of the United States, paragraph 33 of the Riyadh Declaration does just that, but still referring to signatories, uh, to the signatories of the uh, Paris Agreement, which implicitly leaves the US out. So hopefully the situation will get better with Joe Biden but it remains to be seen how at what extent. In any case, action is strictly needed as COVID and lockdowns, uh, with COVID and lockdowns, greenhouse gas emissions were reduced by 17% last April compared to last year. But in September, they were simply back to pre-pandemic levels. So in order to fight climate change, the Italian G20 will attach great importance to fostering sustainable energy sector, including not only renewables generation, but also the role of smart grids, uh, smart grids, as well as energy saving and energy efficiency with the focus on the urban dimension in particular. To this, to this aim, 
green investments, circular economy, and the public-private link will play a key role. In, in addition, the Italian G20 has already made clear that it will attach great importance also to marine biodiversity. And needless to say, the green transition will also be linked to sustainable recovery, just like the other task force, digital transformation. In both cases, it was quite easy for Italy to come up with an agenda as moving towards a sustainable recovery and a more digital future are two major pillars of next generation EU, the Common Recovery Fund of the EU. So for Italy, these are at the same time national, European and global objectives. In fact, we know that digitalization is a policy priority for the whole world, and this has been further spurred by COVID-19. That's why the Saudi presidency launched the initiative Policy Option to Support Digitalization and Build of Business Models during COVID-19, as well as the G20 Roadmap towards a common framework for measuring the digital economy. In this vein, policy areas in this task force will also include the impact and potential digital transformation on healthcare services and systems, cybersecurity risks, global governance for data flows and AI, digital infrastructures and impact of digitalization on global value chains and services. So our aim is to highlight not only the huge opportunity, but also the risks of digital transformation. In this view, the socioeconomic effect of digitalization should be carefully assessed and some key questions raised. How to bridge the urban rural divide, gender and age gap? What's the impact of new digital technologies and AI on employment and workplaces? All this inevitably bring up, brings us to the other task force, social cohesion in the future of welfare system, with the problem of rising inequalities and poverty, as it was said before, at its core. Re recent research, for instance, has shown that pupils that are already at risk of dropping out, of staying behind, are even, even more at risk with distance learning. More broadly, the prospects for vulnerable groups will, be, will, uh, will need to be carefully assessed with a focus in particular on the youth and women. We are also asked to assess and propose action on the link between remote working, productivity, and well-being. And last but not least, this task force will evaluate some mid to long-term dynamics, such as the effects of aging society and urbanization on the sustainability of welfare systems. The last three task forces, uh, they are uh, much more in line with the traditional task forces of the uh, Think 20, with the traditional challenges at the international level, which have been com com much more complicated by COVID-19. The task force on international finance, in particular, raises two key questions. First, who is going to pay for all the skyrocketing debt all over the world? Second, how to mitigate financial risk, especially in least developing and developing countries. In other words, how to escape the fate of a global financial crisis, wherever it comes from after the pandemic. We know that G20 has already announced the agreement on a common framework for debt treatment so beyond the debt service suspension initiative, but we all know that there is much more to do and it is key to, to explore all viable policy options. Of course, other uh, topics and technical aspects will also be tackled in this task force, central bank strategies, financial innovation, cryptocurrencies, fintech, and so, and so on. Then the task force on multilateralism and global governance. Paolo Magri already covered this issue. So just let me highlight some specific policy areas. The need for strengthening and deepening climate governance on top of the usual troubles on trade, investment, and growth the role of social media and civil society engagement in pursuing multilateral endeavor, and the need for more transparency and anti-corruption fight at the global level. Then we have the 11 task force reforming the Think 20 to make the Think 20 exercise more effective and inclusive. Of course, no call for policy brief abstracts is required on this task force, but we will get back to you very soon to collect ideas, proposals, suggestions on reforming the Team 20 uh, exercise. So please follow us through our social media and tomorrow check out our website at www.t20italy.org. And of course, we'll try to engage you all. Thank you very much, Jim, please. Thank you very much. Just a few quick words of uh, 
uh, closing. Uh, one, um, in the words of our newly uh, uh, or designated uh, ambassador to the UN, uh, in speaking uh, at her announcement, uh, she said, multilateralism, international cooperation, and diplomacy are back. And so for all of us, that's an essential element. Um, I think that we can achieve uh, and a structure, especially through the cooperation of the think tanks that are represented here, um, to build a, a more open, inclusive, resilient, transparent, and responsive T20 and G20. Uh, the time for that is now. And together, um, Paolo, uh, Ettore, Antonio will have their hands full, but the rest of us can help build a better T20 and G20 uh, that is more inclusive, responsive, resilient, transparent, uh, and effective in terms of its task. Thanks again to all of you who have listened to this program, and we look forward, or at least Paolo, Antonio, and Ettore, uh, look forward to engaging you uh, throughout 2021 as they lead us through uh, the G20 Italy 2021. Thank you, and good day, good night to all of you. Bye-bye. Hi.